So it's uh, seven o'clock, so we'll, we'll make a start. So welcome to another edition of Welsh Athletics webinar series. I'm Liz Davis and I've been supporting the education and engagement for endurance during lockdown. Um, again, thanks for all for joining. I uh, really appreciate your, your time and support of the webinars. Um, tonight is our fourth webinar and we've got a bit more of a um, middle distance flavour this evening and have the pleasure of being joined by Arwen Davis, um, who will be talking us through the nuances of 800 meter running. Um, for those of you who don't know Arwen, um, Arwen's one of our, well, one of Wales's most experienced and successful coaches. Um, he's coached numerous athletes um, to break the 150 barrier for 800, um, and has also coached um, two athletes, Joe Thomas and Jimmy Watkins, to uh, finals at, at major games. So brings him in a, a wealth of experience over the 800 meters. Um, so before I just hand over to Arwen, a few housekeeping rules for those of you who've not attended the webinars before. So you're all on mute, so we can't hear you talking or the dog barking in the background. Um, there'll be a bit of time for Q&A at the end, so any questions that you have for Arwen, please pop them in the questions drop down on your dashboard and we will try and get through as many questions as we, we can. So without further ado, I will hand you over to Arwen Davis. Okay, thanks Liz for the introduction. Um, welcome everyone to this presentation on what makes an 800 meter athlete. As you can see on the screen, I'm Arwin Davis, level four performance coach and former middle distance event, co event coach. <coughs> okay, during the, the past 30, 30 years as, as, as a coach, I've, I've been, um, I wouldn't say I've been lucky, but I've coached quite a number of international standard athletes, which which opens a few doors for you as a coach. It enables you to work with the service personnel providers in Sport Wales and, and the UK and also attend uh, Great Britain training camps where, again, you come into uh, contact and, and associate with other coaches who are, who are coaching um, international or elite standard athletes. Um, so I made the most of, 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 of that. It's something that, that I enjoy and something that um, with some of the athletes that, that myself and David Rolls coach, something that um, I'd like to do again in, and think I will in the future. We currently coach um, a group of talented middle distance athletes at Cardiff AAC. Um, both males and females, and, and a mixture of juniors and and seniors. What what I um, what what I would like to cover today really is the profile of, of an athlete. Um, so on your on your screen there, you will you will see look at an athlete's age, not just um, the chronological age, but also the the training age of, of, of the athlete and the, and the background, if, if any at all, where, whereby it might be a junior athlete who has little or no background. It may be a senior athlete who is, is new to the sport or has crossed over from, from, from an, another sport. I also like to look at the athlete's strengths and weaknesses. They, there will undoubtedly be, undoubtedly be weaknesses. I've, I've rarely come across an athlete who hasn't any weaknesses at all. So we need to look at look at that side of things. And excuse me, um, some of the weaknesses you, you need to maintain the strengths, and if possible, bring the weaknesses so they relatively on a par with each other. Excuse me, the the speed side of things. I mean, for me, that is uh, very very important. Um, I was. I would much prefer to get um, an athlete who is quick than one who is strong. Um, it's far easier to to make an athlete strong than, than it is to make them fast. And then you look at the athletes, um, you look at their strength and the and the physical and the physical types. Um, some some athletes might might be good with the core. Some athletes might have good general general strength, and some may have a fair deal of, of elastic strength, which is um, of great use if you want to be a good 800 meter athlete. And also when you look at a profile in athletes, 
um, you look at the, the, the three athletes in, in the picture there, um, Joe Thomas to the to the right, Joe probably six foot one, six foot two. Um, ben to the to the left is uh, I think six foot two now at at um, seventeen years of age, and 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 his brother Jacob there in the middle, um, coming up to sixteen and prob probably about six foot at this time. So I think when when you look at those three guys, and obviously Joe did what he did, but I think the the the, the Ben, both Ben and Jacob, have got a good chance of success in the future. When I when I start, I use these two as an example because they're up on the on the screen there. When I started um, coaching them, um, they, they mother asked me if I would um, have a look at them and see see what I thought, and that was in excess of five years ago. They moved quite well. They had a, they had a lot of weaknesses. They had some strengths, a lot of weaknesses. Um, we worked on on the weaknesses, um, and and both are doing doing very well. Ben, as most people know, broke a forty plus year old fifteen hundred meter age group record last year, which is which is good. And they both both move nicely, as do the rest of the athletes in the group. So when you're looking at at, at body types, I think I think that's that's very important, and the attitude of the athletes. You have a, if you bring a good attitude to the table, that that speaks volumes. You can it means you can trust the athlete. You know that when when they when they're at home, and you think the majority of the work that they do is, is from home, then you know that that they that they're gonna fulfil everything that is on that plan. Mental ability, well, that the, the mental ability is is quite quite a difficult one to to get right really. Um, we've got that on, on, you can see on your screen. I just want to talk for a minute about mental ability. Um, it's quite a tough one to to put right. Um, take takes time. Um, there are certain ways of improving that, which are which are far too far too long. Really, take too much time to discuss for this for this webinar. Okay, so. I'm going to give you an overview, really, of um, what I believe and and has worked in the past of um, what I give to 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 800 meter athletes. So we're looking at uh, three blocks of six week six week training. So we've got three phases, which will lead into um, a four to six plus week indoor competition phase. And that will depend on if you get success at um, at various levels, which could and would lead you on to whether it's a world championship or whether it's uh, a European championship late, later in in the competition phase. I would like to to stress the importance of phase on phase training. You know, you put the six week block together. That that initial six week block has to go well. If it if it doesn't go well. And your athlete breaks down at at some point in in that first training phase, then you you will have to go back to the beginning. Um, you can get away with a little blip or a niggle, but any any serious uh, injury really or, or or illness or lengthy spell of illness where the athlete can't train you. For me, you have, you have to go back to the beginning. So. The, the importance of that, that first um, training phase is um, is is um, is paramount, really. Before I go on to the, the phases, I just wanted to um, give you a lot of talk about um, improving the anaerobic speed reserve, the training uh, of that. And you look at this photo here um, of the, the Cardiff athlete, um, Alex Kuma, someone I've Someone I coached and advised for the past nine years, and the other athlete, uh, Jonathan Tobin, who's a friend of mine, and his father too is a very good friend of mine, and the, the, they um, gave me permission to put this uh, put this photo up. Really, thank them for that. For, for me, it it outlines um, what is needed to the end when you come towards the end of an 800 meter race. If you if you just look at the the body posture and the the form um, 
of, of both the athletes uh, for me it just shows um that we have been working in the right area certain times of the year we work in in the right areas and that is something i've been doing for the past 10 to 15 years um alex is um like i said someone who, who we were hoping we'd have um a good year this year uh un unfortunately um for no fault of our own it looks as if that won't happen until next year okay so when we move on to phase one was it a double periodized year so the athlete would want to peak for 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 the indoor season and then also again for the summer track season so as you can see on on the screen it's it's laid laid out there with the with the easy pace runs which would which would be 30 35 minutes the strength and conditioning which i have there would be um primarily in in the weights room certainly for senior athletes and and some of the the, the junior athletes um both ben and jacob uh, are very good in uh, in in the weights room uh, the core sets would be um two different core sets if we do one say on a on a, um on a tuesday and another one on a on a on a friday or a sunday so we, we split those up like that and the the players or player metrics would be um low to start low contacts over low level hurdles uh with the concentration being on eccentric concentric technique and and then we would we would progress progress from there um, I, I would just outline um, the the speed session that uh, that they put in. So it's it's not 800 meters, it's not 1500 meter training. It's four four times 50 meters. Where if you were on a track, you would set um, two cones or two discs 50 meters apart. Have the athlete to um, on, on a rolling start to hit the line at full tilt, um, and then the same. Um, uh, through the 50 meter mark the recovery would be a jog back to the line you do that four times and then you would have a recovery and the recovery would depend on on the athletes you, you were working working with and are they familiar with this type of training and, and are they are they able to undertake this type of training so that's that's quite a quite quite a nice session um it's important when you're sprinting like that that you, you do get your, an, an appropriate warm-up um, done and also whilst whilst um i said it's a speed session it, it is basically a speed session but at some point towards the end of there especially if you're doing four um you know, your fourth set um then a big chunk of it becomes um speed endurance and also when i fetch in um 30 second hills you can block these it's, it's a term that i use for um if you wanted to do um 10 times 30 second hills that that's fine the hill wouldn't be too steep it would be wouldn't be too shallow if you like um, but you can block them and do do them in sets of five with a recovery in between this sometimes for athletes again who are not that familiar with this type of work may be a good a good way to start include a tempo run tempo runs don't suit um don't suit everyone. Not not at the pace that we were looking at them for um, for 800 meters. Um, Joe won't mind me saying uh, that he's he struggled with uh, with with a tempo run. Uh, Joe would get to um, 15, 16 minutes tops. So um, we had a word with um, run this by the physiologist, and he said, look, he said uh, there's a, there's another way of getting you know getting through this. So we we used to do split pace runs, or we would split the the tempo run into two times eight minutes or two times ten minutes. And this has recently ha ha happened um, with with someone I, who I'm currently coaching. And again, I run this by um, a, a, a physiologist friend of mine, um, and he said exactly the same as what I was told um, ten to fifteen years ago. So um, yeah, it's not much of change there. So the easy pace runs would would maybe increase to 40 minutes um 35 to 40 minutes at this this juncture is is fine 
the, the, the rest day, I, I always include uh, one rest day a week. Um, that being because the nature of 800 meter training, the, 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 the weights work, the, the plyometrics and, um, and, the, and, the, and the dynamism needed, if you like, um, is quite hard on the body. And, and I feel that um, with the athletes I coach have certainly been better served by having one rest day a week, although there are some athletes that I've coached who would prefer not to have we say for argument take a Friday off, they would operate, uh, they seem to operate more efficiently if they had half day on a Thursday and then half day on a Friday. They didn't feel so lethargic so they could um, get back into the into their training um, a lot a lot more easily. Okay, so we move into um, phase two, and you can see on, on the screen that the track sessions are were 800 a mixture of 800 and 1500 meters. Also, we would um, have a, a parkland, parkland session or a, a split pace run. And for the athletes who, who were okay with, with a threshold run, periodically we would, we would put a, th a threshold run in. And the runs would be um, a mixture of medium and easy pace, whereas uh, in, in, the, in the first phase, they were uh, predominantly easy pace runs. The weights would very much, for the most part, stay stay the same, uh, as would the core work. The players, we would probably advance uh, to higher level hurdles um, and sometimes and or a bigger distance between the hurdles. And and then um, as, as the athletes are progressing, we would make um, a, a decision on whether we would move to to box jumps and, and various, various other forms of, of plyometrics. And also the inclusion of hill sprints, whereas before we were looking at 30 second hill sprints, now we're looking at 10, eight to 10 times eight to 10 seconds. So basically you are looking for a fairly steep hill. You, you hit it hard, um, so you, you're up on, the, up on your toes. Um, with, with this sort of training is um, a real low risk of injury, really, because um, there's, there's no great buildup of, or if at all, of, of lactate. And um, with it being on an incline, the, your footfall is, is shorter and, and, um, and also you get a promotion of, of explosiveness, uh, the explosiveness through, the, through, through, your, um, through your hips and, and, and also your glutes. Just to um, touch on that, uh, that, that picture that's there, that, that is a picture of someone who, who I coached and really enjoyed coaching, um, coaching for a number of years. Um, came to me from sprint background, turned up a mouse one night when I, when I was living in Porth Hall, um, said he wanted to do 800 meters, and I said, okay, let's give it a go. Got to the world final there in 2006 in Moscow, um, ran a PB in the heat, PB in the semi-final, didn't get a medal in the final, but uh, acquitted itself really, really well. And in there, there are some class as athletes, uh, Bungay, Malodzi, um, Bozakovsky, Milkovic, and I think the guy at the back is Bogdan. That's Jim Jimmy Watkins, who was from Cardiff AAC. Um, yeah, very good 800 meter athlete. Um, during that phase, there, the runs would would could increase to, to fifty minutes. It wasn't. Um, I wasn't obsessed with them being what what I said. If some athletes wanted to do forty to forty five and and mix mix them like that, then then I was I was I was quite quite happy with that. Um, during during this this phase three. As you can see, there's um, again a mixture of 1500 and 800 sessions for the first couple of weeks, and also then I would, we would introduce some some split pace sessions. Uh, living in South Wales, and uh, with, with this um, with, with these phases of training geared towards um, an indoor season, our 
uh, our first low key race would would tend to be the 600 meters in 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 Naya. Um, for for me, it fits it fits in um, really well with, at the at the time of year with with the phases we we've done. Um, and with the 600 meters, I I would expect the the athletes who who have run whatever they've run for for 800 meters to be able to run inside of the 800 meter PB for for 600 meters. Um, that then is a really good indicator that, that the training has been going well. The two phases uh, prior to this one have gone as you would have liked them. The 600 meters then, as 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 a rule, and um, just casting my mind back, ra rarely have, have these not gone to plan for someone unless unless they've come down with a cold or or, or something that make, um, makes them un underperform. Um, okay, um, so if the 600 meters in Nyack, excuse me a minute, has, has gone well, then we, sorry, I interrupted. If the 600 meters in Nyack has, has gone well, then we can look for the, for the next key, key race. I've given an example of some, some sessions on there which are. Um, as, as you can see, they are they are what they are, and there's also um, there's also the availability, if you like, of blocking the reps and 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 and, and sets. Um, coming back to the split pace sessions, they they're quite tough to get to get to get right. I'm I'm sure if there's some athletes that I currently coach watching and some that I've coached in the past will have a, a grimace when I I talk about. 500 meters and 600 meters split, 800, 1500. I mean, but they have to, for me, they have to be done. So you would just give you just give you an example of, of what I'm talking about here. If you had, um, if you were doing four times 500 meters split, first 200 meters at 800 pace, and then you you, you change that, you, you drop off the pace, or you go down to 1500 meter pace, and then you'd have. Uh, the recovery would depend on on the athletes and um, whether they were juniors or whether they were mature senior athletes, or even if they were older older juniors who had been exposed to this sort of training for um, for a, num a number of years, a number of yes, for a number of years. Um, so yeah, you can you with the split pace runs, they 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 they, they tough, but for me they do pay they do pay dividend. Um, when you look at, uh, for me, if you're starting back with, eight, with with some sessions of 800 meters, you would look at um, sessions. A good start back session of 800 meters would be some something around six to eight times 200 meters at, 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 at inside your 800 meter PB pace with um, a good recovery, and then you can move on to to 300s, and then to move that on again, you could you could do 300, 300. So you put them in a block, 300 with 100 jog recovery, 300 again at inside 800 meter pace, and then you'd have a smallish recovery after that first set, and then you would you would move it along. So if you're doing two sets or three sets after the second set, then the, the recovery would, would become somewhat longer because. But for me, doing these sessions, you you want people to be performing and hitting the times, or the, 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 the you were predicted times for them. Yes, the the Saturday morning sessions are, are usually popular, where especially if the sun was shining, um, we would be at the, be at the track for ten or ten thirty, um, get a good warm up done, and then we would do a mixture of one fifties and two hundreds at four hundred, or maybe slightly. Um, inside 400 meter pace with with appropriate jog jog back recovery. That that type of session is a move a, a, away from from the 800 the 800 work and the 1500 work, and it gets the athletes feeling somewhat light, and makes them feel fast, and and obviously they come in you know they come through coming through the three phase the three blocks of training. 
they are um, starting to feel good and looking forward to the competition phase. During this competition phase, I I think it's important that you know you know the athletes that, that we've got a, a race plan. The athletes know that you've got so many key races, be, uh, so many low key races before your key or or, or a target race. So what we don't what to look for really you don't you don't want everyone to be at their best on race one or race two. You need to build into the competition phase. So you have you do some low key races. You might have one that's a a, a bit more of a, of a key race, but not absolutely a key race. And then you need to move on to that. Otherwise, if you if 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 you're going all guns blazing, so to speak, at the beginning of that competition phase, the chances are a couple of weeks down the line, the you you will you'll get to feel jaded. And I have seen this happen. And rarely does does an athlete come back to to be able to produce peak performances. Um, during the during the uh, absolute key races, as you as you see on there, that the, the sessions will become uh, somewhat lighter in in volume, but not not in intensity. The intensity there, the specificity of the 800 meters is is there, and you have to be, as I just um, alluded to with your um, with your race plan. You have to be mindful of the proximity of, a, of the competition. Yes, you, will, you you have to train, but not too hard. It uh, that is a big a big no no for me. Not too hard. Um, if you if you if you competed on on the Saturday and the following Saturday you you won the race, then you do have a chance in that week to put a, a key session in. And, and maybe to put another l low key se session in, um, and and po and possibly do do some work on the on on the sat Saturday morning. Um, whilst whilst you're looking at this, I mean something something really has has, has to make way. So when when we're doing um, plyometrics and and strength and conditioning, the the amount of um, Contacts, if you like, with the with the plyometrics uh, decrease, and and so do the amount of of lifts um, in in the weight room. The the volume would be um, de decreased by probably two thirds. So if, if athletes are doing uh, three three sets of eight reps um, of of all a routine, then and and you know it could be um, front squats, back squats. Um, deadlifts, RDLs, and overhead warm up, uh, overhead um, squats as a as a warm up, then that that would come down to the the same intensity, but um, the volume would we would probably only do one set. If we got an opportunity on a weekend where they where they weren't competing, we might we, yeah we, the chances are we would put another another, another set of, um, of of weights in there. Okay, so <clears throat> I've gone through the the, the competition phase. I, I just wanted to give you an, an overview, really, on what I I believe um, an, an 800 meter athlete needs regarding strength and conditioning, um, the promotion of local muscular muscular endurance with the central nervous system, neural system, and plyometrics and hill sprint <clears throat> with 800 meter athletes. I think a good sound S and C program is is paramount. Some a, a program that is that is for them, um, and it may change at at, at given times, but predominantly is they is is they a program? Um, a, a program that's designed to um, to promote local muscular endurance and central nervous system. So that would be like plyometrics, start off low level, as I alluded to earlier, eccentric, concentric, pro progress to box jump, and the hill sprints, which I which I talked about briefly, with with a with a full recovery uh, to enable to ensure consistency across across all all the reps, and that improves running economy. It's a low injury risk. So 
<clears throat> I'm a big I'm a big fan of um, of the hill of the hill sprint. Um, and conditioning is an awful lot said about strength work and and strength and conditioning, but for me the conditioning um, if I if I can go back to um, to use uh, Joe Thomas as an example, I know he won't mind me doing this. Um, Joe knew that uh, on on for for one race, Joe Joe was good, but he didn't have the con conditioning to enable him to go to go through the round. So we we had to make some some inroads in, into that. So we tried to make him more resilient with various forms of um, various forms of work to enable him to go through the heats and also to have the ability to hold form towards towards the end of the race so in that sense we worked a lot with the with the strength and conditioning people in sport with uh, hats off to them um, put a good program together for uh, between myself and I, I had input into it um, and, and with the with the service providers the strength and conditioning guys um, to a point where Joe um, became robust, he was he was resilient, um, and he was able to go when when things were well for him. He was able to to go through the round and and and, and yeah, run run some really impressive um, eight hundred meter races and times. And um, just at the a footnote on the bottom there, I put the central nervous service system, central nervous system, neural system. Um, why it's why it's worth paying it paying attention to that. Um, just want to give a little you can see uh, some some pictures up on the on the on the screen there which um, which show again um, Alex Alex Kuma. Um, all all of the attributes you can see on the left hand side there. Well left hand side I'm looking at it. Um, he he has in abundance. Uh, he's someone I started coaching um possibly uh eight eight to nine years ago um he was fast which i which i really liked he's 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 grown as an individual he's grown as as, as an athlete um six foot three something tall and the, i couldn't get the video to um on this side to to be able to show you properly, so what, what I did, I took a couple of uh, shots of it, and and that is him take a left foot takeoff, and uh, and he really nails that landing on the left foot, and that's on an 18 and 24 inch box, so that the guy has a load of elasticity, um, he's dynamic, all the things that you see there, he he is um, he possesses in 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 abundance. Going back a couple of years ago, we'd done some testing with him in sport wheels to get a set of numbers. And um, the the force that he was producing on what they call a force plate or a jump mat was for a middle distance athlete were was were through the ceiling. Um, we were hoping for a good year for him this year. Things have started to go well. Um, it's taken a while. He's 25 years of age and um, hopefully next year we'll be able to, um, to have some good competition and and we can put ourselves out there. Um, okay, uh, the tactical uh, side, the things are tactical. Nous is about um, knowing knowing your competitors. Uh, it's quite easy these days to know what people's PB PBs are. Um, you can look at them obviously on Power of Ten and and um you can you can see bmc races and other things on 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 various platforms but you i'd like to formulate a plan to give you the best chance of success and and of a positive performance if you don't win the race at least have have a have a positive performance through the through the rounds it's it, it's nice to run to run as smooth as, as you can so you would avoid as, I, as, as on there, you know, any major surges or changes of lane where you go from the inside lane to lane, outside lane two or three, um, get caught up, a uh, bit of bumping and boring, uh, knocks you out, out, your, out your stride. And I just put um, something in there which uh, always brings a smile to my face, really. 
Now, he's coaching um, Jacob Renner. Uh, this happened a couple of years ago, I think, in the end of 15, 1500 meter uh, championships in Bedford. So, it's UK championship. I think things were going great until about 200, 220 meters to go. A guy, um, another athlete came came round from the back, took the race on, um, and all of a sudden, people reacted, and J Jacob was 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 stuck on the inside, um, and he waited and waited and waited until a gap appeared. He didn't win the race, but he did finish in second place. And I I I believe I was there watching that if he had if he had sort of Taking a different, uh, a different way of of getting out there, and he had had to slow down, come around the back of the athletes, come out into lane two or three. I don't think he would have, he would have got a medal. Um, and it's just testament really to what I was saying about attitude, about young athletes listening to what you have to say. Um, leads me on to a little bit about um. The 800 meters, uh, the, the the racing, the way the races can can pan out. I'm just giving you a couple of couple of scenarios there, where most races these days tend to be a certainly um, they, they they tend to be certainly the races that you watch tend to watch on on television or whatever. The 200 meters is is more often than not the fastest section of the race, so. That that's fine. You've you've done you've done all your training, but there you've got a lot of athletes vying for just about the same position. Um, they 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 want to to be in the best spot where they can even before the race they they would have imagined themselves being there. And some athletes will, will but they get to get. I'm I'm not sure that's the right way to go. So you have to be tactically aware and and astute and astute you. Do you do you really push on and and get get in the or in a position you really want to be in, or do you think I'm 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 happy enough you I'm in fourth place or whatever and I I'm I'm happy with this I can work with this, and then the other the other scenario I've highlighted is is with um you know the the race is is run with a slow first section, but do you have the attributes then to win the race from you? You know that takes out of the equation the, the guys with with the, with the quickest PBs for a lot of the time, because the, these guys may have slower PBs, but they might have the ability to outkick you over the last 250, 300 meters. So that's where you have to um, be able to think on your feet with all the best laid race plans in the world. As soon as a gun goes. They may well go out the window, and then it's 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 down to you to work out the best way to win that race or get a positive performance. It's it's, it's fascinating for me, really. Eight eight hundred meter running um, and racing. That's that's why I coach it. It's it's my favourite event on the track. Um, it's been a pleasure giving you an insight and an overview to the way I go about things. Uh, thank, thanks for you all for listening and attending. And I would just like to say one thing before I hand you back to Liz and close, close this presentation, apart from the question and answers. As coaches who are listening this evening, if you take away just one thing from this presentation, that more isn't always best. Thank you very much for your time. Over to Liz. Okay, oh, we just got a few um, few questions coming in. Which if, if it's okay if I can pose them, or I'm happy for you to to read them out. I think the first question from Ian Evans. He just wanted you to clarify a little bit what what a parkland session was, and kind of what you know what constitutes a parkland session. Okay, it would be a um, for example a, a group a group session um, which we would sometimes hold at um, just just various parkland. It could be. Uh, Newbridge Fields in Bagend, um, we tend to use Pont Canna Fields or Heath Park. If you're in Heath Park, it's it's almost if you stay to the perimeter, the tree perimeter, and close to the 
the, the path that's close to the road is, is, is nigh on a kilometre. So it's easy to, to turn it into a kilometre rep session or two kilometre rep sessions, or even um, alternate between um, a one kilometre rep and a two kilometre rep and alternate them like that. Also, um, the fart leg sessions attend, uh, tended to be um, on parkland or, or on grass or over or, or over trails, and also the split base sessions where you you similar to a fart leg, but you would you would do it um, sort of five minutes medium, five minutes a uh, five minutes zone two, five minutes zone three, five minutes zone one, and then you could use that same block um, three or four times depending on um, on athlete ability. Great, thanks, Al. So another question um, from from Gareth uh, Gareth Davis. So he's asking, do you have a, a different approach to um, to coaching the injury meters with junior athletes, and, and namely around the S and C side of things? So how does that differ, maybe, from some of the senior athletes uh, you've coached? Okay, okay. Um, interesting question. That one for me. Um, with with the junior athletes, um, I I like to uh, do some circuit training. Use some body weight exercises, um, and then you can progress the, the, the circuits. You can, you know, increase the reps or whatever. And and then when you think that the young athletes would benefit from it, there's a, a circuit session called um, you do circuit and run sessions. So you you could say do three stations. You could do press up, sit ups, burpees. Um, if you're at a track, you do 400 meters at um, three kilometer pace or, or, or 5k pace depending on on the athlete ability and what you want to get out of the, of the session um, and there's also a circuit called an, or an Oregon circuit which which again is, is running involved and all the exercises uh, are leg based exercises so there's there's basically no arms or upper body it's, it's what's, what's known as as an Oregon circuit yeah but okay. just just a just to say a little bit more on that one. Then when the athletes, um, when they introduce them to some uh, weight weights work, uh, then you, you you really have to know what you're doing and ensure in that, that you have the correct technique from, from the start, because there are a lot of injuries um, with uh, people pick up a lot of injuries through incorrect techniques in the weight room. Okay, there's a, another question come in from uh, Max Nathan. He's asking, um, does the type of training that you've described um, today um, apply to, to girls uh, as well as boys? Or yes, men yes, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, they're, they're, the, the group of the, the girls that are in the group um, are, quite, are quite successful in, indoors. Um, most of them picked up picked up medals. In in fact, there was one athlete, young Molly, who picked up, who won both the 800 and the 1500 meters. Um, ben and Jacob won both the 8 and the 15. Um, so, yes, and young Nia picked up a medal and and, and I think Jess, Jess Evans picked up a medal. But they, 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 um, they primarily do the same thing in as as a guy, sometimes the recoveries are, are a bit are a bit longer. They they haven't got the the straight the same strength and conditioning program as the as the guys have. Um, that that we intended put putting in in place, um, and we were putting in place um, from a technique uh, um, standpoint, which would enable them to go on and. Um, uh, and, and perform some some of the the, the weight weight routines that um, people like Alex, Ben, and Jacob are, are performing, and, and also Keith and the same. Okay, um, that concludes the questions. Um, Arwen, there's uh, no further questions, and um, so yeah, on behalf of um, Welsh Athletics, uh, Arwen, we, we'd like to thank you for, for your time and, and efforts and um, putting this presentation on. Um, really appreciate your time. For those guys of you watching. Um, there are further webinars coming up for Welsh Athletics, so you can check those out on our Welsh Athletics website and stay, in, stay involved. But yeah, thanks very much, Arwen, and 
yeah, stay safe for everybody and, uh, and take care. Okay, thank you, Liz, and thanks for everyone for attending. Much appreciated. Good evening. Okay, thanks. Thanks, guys. Take care. Good.